I'm here with former Bellator MMA fighter Chaim Gozali to break down the lies of former UFC fighter Jeff Monson. Now Jeff, a Russian citizen who gave up US citizenship to become Russian and now defends the Russian army who occupied parts of Ukraine, decided to create a video sharing facts about Israel. But as it turns out, he doesn't actually know a thing. Let's take a look. The terror organization I'm referring to is the Israeli army or the IDF. The first off, a state military cannot, by definition, be a terrorist organization. Yosef, let's continue watch. What is the most funded terrorist organization in the world? The terrorist organization I'm referring to has been at work 75 long years and is still going strong thanks to the annual contribution of three and a half billion, with a B, dollars from America to buy weapons. Now Jeff is just showing off his ignorance. For starters, over 80% of US aid to Israel is reinvested in the US economy, creating American jobs. And I don't dare call it defense spending because this terror organization is like a great ba NBA basketball team. Offense, offense, offense. When there's no need for defense when you're always attacking. Now this is getting funny. To claim that the weapons Israel purchase are for offense is laughably absurd. Since some of the most expensive military equipment used in Israel is the Iron Dome. Is the Iron Dome, an exclusively defensive technology costing over $1 billion that protects civilians by shooting down rockets fired by Palestinian terrorists into Israel in mid-flight. Israel pays $60,000 for each Iron Dome deployment to protect its civilians, both Arabs and Jews, from incoming terrorist rockets. And don't forget that the IDF targets military sites exclusively and has repeatedly called off strikes in order to prevent civilian casualties. Palestinian terrorists, on the other hand, are firing directly at Israeli civilians. This terror group is almost single-handedly responsible for the unrest and upheaval in the Middle East. So not the Syrian civil war, the Yemen civil war, the Iran-Iraqi war, which had over one million casualties, the Lebanese civil war, the Iraqi war, the Afghan war, and the Taliban, the Arab Spring conflict in Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, and other countries, all Israel, right? Oops, Israel wasn't involved in any of that. Amnity International has officially registered Israel and is apartheid state. Oh, of course, Amnesty is apartheid smear. But if you take a look at Israel's declaration of independence, it explicitly protects minorities and freedom of religion. And while Israel deals with challenges of racism like any nation, there is no apartheid in Israel. And as an Arab citizen of Israel myself, I have equal rights under the law. The irony cannot be lost on the fact that the Jewish people, victims of the Nazis and one of the most notorious genocides in history, are now themselves the perpetrators of genocide against another people. Not only is the comparison of Israel to Nazis blatantly anti-Semitic, the accusations of genocide is easily proven false. According to the Palestinian Authority's own statistics, Palestinian population in all Palestinian cities and towns has constantly increased in both the West Bank and Gaza. You probably didn't hear about this, but in the last three Gaza operations combined, less Palestinians were killed than the number of Palestinians killed by Syrians in the Syrian civil war. And unlike in Syria, the majority of casualties in Gaza were combatants. Genocide, not even close. Not even close. There have been no major problems in the Middle East before the creation of Israel. Of course, the Middle East was a beacon of peace and tolerance before 1948. No conflict with the Ottoman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the Persian Empire, the Islamic conquest, the Crusades, the Great Syrian Revolt, the Saudi Yemen War, World War I, World War II. Jeff, are you actually this ignorant? Filming IDF soldiers is illegal. Recording night raids of Palestinian homes, arrests of children, killing of children, the shooting of journalists will be met with prosecution, while the perpetrators, those actually committing these acts of violence, continue with no inhibition. I know you're confused because Russia doesn't respect freedom of press or allow their citizens freedom, but there is no law against filming IDF soldiers. Additionally, Israel respects journalists and violations are thoroughly investigated including the case of Sharin Abu Haqli. When an IDF soldier does act in violation of the rules of engagement, they are harshly prosecuted. 
something that has happened even in recent years when a soldier saw a terrorist, a terrorist who was already on the ground, not posing a threat. Palestinians are Semites too. Palestinians are Semites. So is it being anti-Semitic to point out the ethnic cleansing of the genocide of Palestinians who are Semites? There is no such thing as Semites. The term Semites is taken from the term anti-Semites, which was coined by a German journalist, Wilhelm Marr, in reference to Jews, and was used in Nazi pseudoscience to discriminate against Jews. The term Semitic is a philological term that refers to a school of languages, not an ethnicity or a people. Historically, or today. Israel has bombed Gaza into rubble, and they don't lend in humanitarian aid, restrict less food into Gaza than is needed to sustain the population. Ah yes, another ugly blood libel. On an almost daily basis, Israel ensures the transfer of food, supplies, and humanitarian aid to Gaza. In fact, one of the only times this was prevented was when terror group Hamas literally bombed their own humanitarian aid crossing point with rockets. Funny how you left that part out, ah, huh, Jeff? And here's a bonus fact for you, Jeff. Do you know which Arab country closed its border with Gaza because of terrorism? Egypt. An Arab country. All infrastructure has been destroyed by Israel fighter planes. Necessities for life, including medical, food, are blocked from entering. 94% of all fresh water unsafe to drink because the water distillation plant has been destroyed by Israel. Infrastructure has only ever been targeted if it's being used for terrorist purposes. If infrastructure isn't rebuilt, that's because Hamas is using billions of dollars in resources and construction materials to build terror tunnels, to smuggle in weapons and carry out attacks into Israel. As for water, Gaza's water aquifers haven't been built because of internal political conflicts between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority, not because of Israel. Israel has repeatedly tried to work with Palestinians to improve the water system in Gaza. But who won't work with Israel? The Palestinian leader. So Jeff, now that you understand that your entire presentation was absolutely nonsense, here's your chance to apologize and admit how wrong you are. And Jeff, if you still have a problem with the facts, you can always come visit me in the cage for one-on-one -on -one session. You heard him.